There are a lot of things I don't like about the company Apple. But one of the things I dislike most is how I underestimate how crappy their products are. And it's embarrassing that I'll talk to somebody who has an iPhone and I'll be like, oh yeah, you should be able to do this, you should be able to do that. It's just like common standard things. And then I find out I'm wrong. It's like, it's like I think, oh no, they can't be this bad. They have to be able to do this. And then I'm wrong. And it's like, it's almost like I was defending Apple and they're just worse off than I thought they were. So going back when the iPhone first came out, you know, uh, you hear, okay, you, you can't, you need iTunes to copy your music over. It's like, I'm like, and, and I knew that. I'm like, okay, unlike most devices where you just plug in USB and you can copy files over, you can copy your music over, you need iTunes. That's pretty crappy. But I'm like, of course, if I put it up on a web server, you can download. Now this is, this is like, I don't know, 2009, 2010, whenever, it's just within a year or two of, of the iPhone coming out, I'm trying to help a friend and he didn't want to use iTunes, at least not at first. And um, he ended up having to. Um, it's just, but I'm like, there's no way you go back in time to like the, you know, the 70s. And it's so pathetic that the iPhone can't do certain things that, the, that, that, that computers back in the 70s could do. And now, obviously we didn't have MP3s back in the 70s, but you were able to log into a server with like FTP or whatever. You'd be able to pull down whatever file you want. There would be no reason. I just want to pull down this file. And obviously back then, you know, an MP3 would be a huge file. It would take forever. But the thing is, you, you technically could do it. An iPhone, still to this day, it's 2018. If I put an MP3 up on my web server and send someone with an iPhone or an iPad the link, they can stream it, they can listen to it, but they cannot download it. And at first that, that blew my mind. It's like, really? How can, how can you restrict that? And, and I was just embarrassed that I was told someone, oh yeah, yeah, you can definitely do that. Why wouldn't you be able to do that? And it's, it's just funny because it's like functionality that is there. I mean, the, the phone could obviously do it, but they took the time to put in so that you can't. And that is so ridiculous. And actually at the time, again, this is old school iPhones back in the day, um, I tried to trick it. I was like, okay, well, I can, uh, I can download a text file. So I actually took an MP3, put it on my server. I was like, okay, I can rename it. Uh, I named it uh, whatever.txt. I'm like, I'll download it and rename the file. Well, I download it, and it, there's no option to rename the extension. I'm like, what? And so I'm like, okay, uh, maybe um, I think I converted it to an, well, didn't convert it, but I renamed it .html after that to see what would happen. And I clicked on it, and actually at the time, if you took a large file like an MP3, a large binary file, named it .html, put it up on a web server, and directed Safari to it, it would lock up the phone for like five minutes, and then finally the, the phone would reboot. Which, when I first did that to my friend's phone, I thought I broke his phone. <laughs> uh, but luckily it got out of that. Oh, but I used to have so much fun going to the Apple store and just going to all the browsers and pointing it to my web server to the MP3 file I renamed .html, and they would all just freeze up. Nothing would happen, and then it would get the Apple symbol, the the you know, on the screen, and it would take forever for it to reboot. And just just stand there and watching the salespeople trying to show people the devices, and none of them were working. Eventually, you know, after five minutes or so, the phones would reboot, and they would start working. But it's just like so ridiculous. Uh, since then, they they fixed that problem. I don't know if the new phones have uh, more RAM, so it doesn't just overflow everything, or if they fix things in their browser so it doesn't overflow. And then, uh, but. More recently, a year or two ago, I had a buddy who had an iPhone, and uh, since then I've gotten him switched over to an Android phone. Um, not that they're a whole lot better. And I also want to make that clear. Uh, I have an Android device. I love any device that I can get a root shell and a Linux kernel, I'm good on. And the Android devices do some a few things very well, but they could be much better. So, so I don't, you know, everyone, some people are like, oh, Chris, uh, Chris is an Android guy. He loves Android. And I don't love Android. I use Android and I tolerate it. Uh, but compared to uh, iOS, it's a hundred times better. Uh, but here's another example. My buddy, he was an artist. He would make these sculptures and he was trying to enter a, a uh, you know, an, a competition or a gallery or something like that. And he needed to take pictures of his work rename the files, the name of the artwork, and then email them to somebody. 
And he came and asked me, oh, can you help me with that? I'm like, oh, sure, no problem. You know, you take the pictures. You know, he didn't have a computer. All he had was his, his phone and iPad at the time. He's like, I'm like, just take the pictures and, and we'll rename it, you know. So you go in there and I'm trying to find, the, you know, the file in the file browser, but there's no rename option. So, I mean, we spent 15, 20 minutes and every, every, I found videos on YouTube, oh, yeah, to rename an image file. And all of them was you had to buy uh, an application. There was no free application and the device just couldn't do it itself. You couldn't, like on an Android device, you can go into your, your file manager, whether it be the default one on the system or, or a free one, like uh, Amaze is the one I'm using now, which is a free and open source one. It is, you just go in there and rename the file just like you would on a computer. I could not figure out how to do it without buying software. Um, so I said, you know what, you know what, we're not wasting any more time on this email me the files. He emailed me the files. On my phone, I renamed them and then emailed them back and then he was able to email them to the guy. It's just ridiculous. Again, going back to the, to the 70s, if you had a computer in the 70s, you could rename a file. You know, depending on your, your, your uh, file system, you might have a limit to number of characters in the name, but you could rename a file whatever you want within those restrictions, but it's like you could rename a file. And again, he couldn't do it. It's just like, and then more recently, and these are just a few examples, but I'm just like, I tell people, oh yeah, we can do that. You, you got an iPhone, but we, well, we can do that. We can, and then I find out you can't. Well, I was talking to somebody about notifications, and I was talking about how um, now with HTML5 standards, you have uh, web push notifications, which I think is a great idea. Instead of, I, I personally don't install very many applications. I don't even use web notifications at all, but I think it's great rather than having a hundred different applications in the background running on your phone checking for updates from their servers you can just have Chrome or whatever web browser you use it's a standard HTML standard that's been around for five or six years now it's been a standard you know and I'm like you just go you know you go if you know what I'm talking about if you go to like uh, um, Facebook as an example in your web browser uh, on a especially on a mobile device uh, it will pop up a thing saying, do you want to receive notifications? You say yes or no. If you say no, it won't, shouldn't ask you again. And you can go and turn that off altogether if you don't like it, because some people don't like it, but you have the option there. While well, I was talking to someone about that who has an iPhone, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, and um, they were like, one of the, I was talking to two people, and one of them's like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't think the iPhone has that. I'm like, no, no, it's, it's a standard. It's been around. It's part of the web browser. Um, and later on that day I go home and I'm Googling about it and turns out, even though it's been around in standard, standard, in it, 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 iPhone still doesn't have it. And it's not that it doesn't have it, it's that they restrict you from doing it. So even if you have Chrome or Firefox installed, uh, they limit, you can't, you can't have web notifications as far as I know. So you're required to download all these different applications for all the services you use. So if you want to get Facebook notifications, you have to install the Facebook app rather than having one application handle all that, which I think is just a much more efficient way of doing it if you're going to get push notifications like that. Uh, and again, personally, I, I don't think I have any of those set up. And I personally get notifications from my web server, but I just have the web server text it to me, which you get like a five to 10 second delay getting a text. But um, I'm just amazed that again, web browsers like Chrome and Firefox who have this functionality built in don't have it on an iPhone. And I'm assuming because Apple doesn't allow them. For another example, this is, uh, this is another thing. Um, <clears throat> I love when I make a, a website or a web application, I create a nice little icon for it. And uh, I set it as the fave, av uh, the fave icon so that when you add to home screen, it uses that icon. Well, on, a, on an Android device or uh, Linux or Windows or I'm assuming Mac as well, desktop device you're using Chrome, it will use that icon if you add it to your home screen or desktop. And uh, not on an iPhone. First of all, on an iPhone, Chrome and Firefox, they're restricted. I'm assuming that they're not allowed because on, on an Android device, I go into Chrome, it says add to home screen, and it will use my icon, put it on my home screen uh, that from the web server, and it, it works it works great and you can even have it so that it opens up without the toolbar and everything again settings in your page so it looks just like a regular application on your device there's really you can't you can't tell that it's a web app other than a newer version of android they added so when they put your icon they also put a mini chrome icon on there which is really annoying uh but other than that and hopefully they get rid of that um once you, you add that to your home screen, you can't tell that it's not a local application. It runs just like, it even has a, uses that icon as a load screen when your page is loading. It's great. iPhone, 
you can't add shortcuts to Firefox or Chrome as far as I know. Uh, the only browser I know that you can add icons to the desktop with is Safari. And again, I'm assuming that's restrictions put on there by Apple. And if, if I'm wrong, let me know. Which is annoying because Safari, if you go to like uh, web standards, Safari is always the last one. Uh, Internet Explorer, even Internet Explorer seems to, to come out ahead of Safari on that with functionality, adding functionality like the, the, the web notifications. It's like, these are functionalities. It's the standard since so-and-so and it's like, Chrome has had it, Firefox got it shortly after that, Internet Explorer got it two years after that, Safari still doesn't have it. But it's the only um, browser that they allow on iOS devices to put an icon on the desktop. That is so annoying. And, but it's just to force you to use their products, which is also why they don't let you download music, because they want you to use iTunes. It's all about control. It's all it is. It's not even about money, it's about control, uh, which can make you lots of money. Um, but going on from there, it's just so annoying. And, and then moving on, actually I was going to end there, but now I'm thinking about like with Safari, something else that's annoying about iOS devices in Safari. So I've written lots of applications for use at work, uh, making it easier for people to, to organize stuff. And um, I'll use local storage on the device, so you can go into offline mode and or it saves your settings into local storage. Now on, uh, in a Chrome browser, on both Android and and iOS as far as I know and desktop machines. If you're in incognito mode, which is private mode, and I set local storage, it will store that stuff to local storage until you close that tab and then it's erased, which is great. So if I have it, you know, for example, I work for the fire department, I have you doing something and you set your truck so that every menu going to it knows what truck or station you're at. I use local storage. And so you don't have to each screen, if you're filling out a form, go, oh, I'm at this station, I'm on this truck. It just saves it. And even in the incognito mode, it saves it until you close that window, which is great. It still works fine. Well, I had all these problems with people, some people with iPhones it was working, other people it was not. And they were using Safari because they wanted to add the shortcuts to their desktop to make it easier to use. Which, by the way, when Safari adds a shortcut to the desktop on iOS devices, it doesn't use the icon you set. It takes a screenshot of the web page and shrinks it down. It looks horrible. It just does. Um, but finally I figured out these people were in private mode. They didn't even realize they were in private mode. They got into it by accident. I've had people get back into it by accident without realizing it, which really doesn't happen with Chrome. It's like, well, you're in this. If Once you close Chrome, those tabs go away. But you can close. It seems like you can close Safari, and when you reopen it, if you were in private mode before, you're still in private mode. And it does not save anything to local storage during that session. It's like, and my programs weren't working because it's looking for the local storage, and it isn't there. And it's just like, why would you do that? I get this is private mode, but clear it out after I close the browser. Don't don't prevent me from having that functionality just because I'm in private mode. That's just ridiculous. So, and I'm sure there's some people argue, oh, but it's more private that way. Well, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's like I'm using functionality of a site, and when I close it, it should go away if I'm in private mode, but not while I'm in there. But that's why I have local and session, or uh, yeah, local storage and session storage when I'm making a choice when I'm writing the application. Anyway, so that's just ridiculous. And again, I, it's like, why would it function like that? I would assume that it would function the standard, just like every other browser out there, but no, it doesn't. <sighs> and that's the annoying part. It's like, this is how things are done. This is how everyone does things. And it's not that what you're doing is a better way of doing it. You just want to be different. And most of the way it's so that you can control that person. It is annoying. And I keep underestimating Apple. I keep going, there's no way that they won't let you do this. And then I find out that they won't let you do this. And it's, again, it's, they're going out of their way to do it because it's standard functionality, some of this stuff, like renaming files or downloading MP3s. It's like they actually have to go in and write programs that stop you from doing that so that you can't do that. It's already the default, you know, settings. Ugh, so annoying. Anyway, these are the things, just a few of the things that aggravate me about Apple. I thank you for watching. And I hope that you have a great day.